The month of July is all but set to go down in history as one marked by an unprecedented number of extreme weather events. Hardly a corner of the planet left untouched by the impact of climate change. In Asia, labelled last week by the World Meteorological Organization as the world's most disaster-prone region, the dire picture largely ricocheted between deadly floods and scorching temperatures. The latter result of blistering heat waves sweeping the northern hemisphere, shattering temperature records across Europe, the United States and China. Experts describe July 2023 as globally the hottest month ever. Out of the 30 hottest days on record, 21 fell in July. Now, the mean global temperature was also at least 0.2 degrees Celsius higher than the July of just four years ago, with that month in 2019 holding the record until now. now that puts it at roughly 1.5 degrees above the pre-industrial average. Now, these are increases governments have not taken lightly. Singapore launching its first heat stress advisory to help people manage the risks of heat-related illnesses. Our heat stroke alerts also went full blast in Japan and China, where mercury levels soared past the 50 degrees mark, setting new national records. Prolonged extreme heat often spells higher precipitation because the hotter the air, the more moisture that air can carry. And that was precisely what happened last month, when record monsoon rainfall inundated large swathes of Asia, in particular Japan, China, South Korea and India. The deluge in India delivering New Delhi its wettest day in July in over 40 years. Our flash floods and landslides have claimed the lives of more than 100 people across the region and forced the evacuation of countless others. And that's not to mention Doksuri, the second typhoon to make landfall in China in less than two weeks and the most powerful to hit the country this year so far. It moved from the Philippines across southern Taiwan, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Meanwhile, across the globe, parts of the United States are so hot, doctors are treating patients for burn injuries incurred from just falling on pavements. More than 5,000 records have been broken or tied in recent weeks. Some 180 million people are under heat watches and warnings. That is about half the population of the United States. Further up north, parts of Canada quite literally on fire. Firefighters are battling more than a thousand blazes across the country, most of them considered out of control. At least four times as much land has been scorched compared to any other season in the country since 1990. Across the Atlantic, equally ferocious wildfires are ravaging southern Europe and North Africa, with Greece suffering its worst July on record as far as wildfires are concerned, is what the country's Prime Minister has likened to, quote, a war. The UN chief issuing a no less stark description of the climate crisis. He says it's no longer the era of global warming, but of global boiling. And as the list of record-breaking events threatens to grow, scientists are making clear human-induced climate change that's to blame. <laughs> And to help us make sense of these extreme weather events, let's uh, bring in Professor Janet Lindsay, climatologist with Fenner School of Environment and Society, Australian National University. Well, thanks for joining us, uh, Professor. These extreme weather events uh, have happened for decades now, but July, July is packed with anomalies that seem to exceed any definition of normal. Now, Professor, when you were pouring through all that data, what raised your eyebrows? What really struck me is how widespread these anomalies have been in, in July and in June, actually. So, you know, June was the warmest month on record. And then July exceeded that and became the warmest month on record. And that's remarkable in itself. And then to find that we have got these incredibly high temperatures exceeding expectations everywhere and breaking records everywhere across the Northern Hemisphere on every continent, that is extremely unusual. I have not seen this before to the extent and to the degree that it has happened on this occasion. And the juxtaposition uh, as your intro outlined of extremely high temperatures and dry conditions and wildfires with heavy rainfall in other parts of the Northern Hemisphere, 
These are all the extreme events that we expect to happen in a heating world with global heating that has proceeded unchecked, really, for decades now. And this is the sort of thing that climatologists such as myself have been warning about for a long time. We have spent many years sounding the warnings and finding that the actions taken by decision makers have not necessarily lived up to what has been necessary to ameliorate the emissions of greenhouse gases, which are behind all of this heating and the extreme events that are resulting much sooner than we had hoped. Right. Now, there is this thing about climate variability and there is this thing about climate change science, which is your expertise. How exactly do you determine and assess, you know, what's happening is in direct proportion to how much we're actually warming the planet? Ah, so when we look at the difference between variation and change, what we're really looking at is how unusual in the whole length of all the records that we have are the events that are occurring. And when I say the records that we have, I don't only mean the records that we have made with modern instruments at weather stations around the world. What I mean is going back into the paleoclimate record of tens and even hundreds of thousands of years ago, using things like cores from the ice in the Arctic and Antarctica uh, and various other methods of reconstructing our climate. And whatever measures we take, whatever time period in the past we look at, what is happening now is extreme by any measure. Once you exceed our one standard deviation of variation away from the average, you're starting to get into extreme territory. So we could put it another way and say, uh, perhaps the most extreme 10% of all measures, all events of high temperature, that would constitute a, a, a very large extreme. And that is made many times more likely by the underlying trend of heating that has been occurring over, as I say, many decades, and in fact now for more than 100 years, because of the actions that human beings have taken in burning fossil fuels and large-scale land clearing for various human activities. Right. That is what is underlying this. And we have to remember that our average temperatures are now in many parts of the world two degrees higher than they were pre-industrially. Mm. And the extremes that happen in our weather are happening on top of these increased averages. And that is what is, is taking them well beyond the bounds of anything that's been experienced previously. So, Professor, you know, what, what's all these, you know, unsettling display of uh, anomalies with what we've seen in July and uh, June and July? Is this then just an example, a sample of what normal could be in a world warmer by one and a half degrees? Absolutely. Uh, and in fact, you know, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the body and the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the bodies that look at assimilating all of the scientific evidence around climate change, uh, around what is going on with the impacts of global heating, a special report was produced a few years ago, which looked exactly at extreme events under 1.5 degrees and under 2 degrees. The I think the only thing that is a little surprising about what is happening right now is not the extent of what is happening, the increased frequency of these severe events, but more that they are happening so soon. We had hoped that these kind of ex really extreme temperatures, storms, etc., would become much more frequent by perhaps 2050 or beyond. But we are starting to see them happening already. The clim whole climate system is more sensitive than we had thought to the pressure, the disruption that is being imposed by the human activities driving global heating. Well, many thanks for your uh, time and thoughts there. Uh, Janet Lindsay, climatologist with the Australian National University.